It's about that time for another lens review. And what's on tap today? What I have in my hand is the Nikon 180mm f2.8 AF-N portrait lens. I'm going to do a full-on review for you guys, take some sample images, do some video clips with this lens. I got a few surprises for you guys in this video. You guys ready? Let's get started. Rock and roll. What's good guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. This is my official review of the Nikon 180mm f2.8 lens from the old days. This is a gem of a lens. I just got it. Read a couple of reviews on Vahography. A couple of my subscribers left comments about this beautiful lens. And today, we are going to review it. And by the way, I'm in beautiful Mount Baldy, located in California, Southern California. Perfect day to take some pictures in the mountains, in the snow. It just snowed last night, yesterday. And it's a little cold, but you know what? We're going to review this. Again, my official review of the Nikon AF 180mm f2.8 lens. This is the pre-D lens. There's a D lens that comes right after this, but this lens right here is the AF version, the one right before that. And also a little bit later on this video, I'm gonna show you a photo shoot I did with this lens, and we'll go over the images as well, some portraits that I took, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, let's get started. Again, beautiful Mount Baldy. Who can ask for a better setting than this to test this lens out? All right, guys, let's get started. Before we get started with all the fun in this review, let me go over a brief history of the 180 millimeter lens. The autofocus version of this lens came out in 1986. Yes, 1986, a few decades back. How old were you in 86? Oh, let me see. I was uh, in first grade. <laughs> anyway, Two years, the AF version of the 180 was a plastic body. From 88, 1988 to 1993, they produced the AFN version, which is what this is. All metal body, amazing construction, uh, very built like a tank. I mean, amazing. So that was from 1988 to 1993. From 93 on they made the AFD version. Now let me tell you all three of those versions have the same exact glass, the same exact performance. The only difference that I see aperture ring is a little bit different design from the AFN version to the AFD version. The AFD has three rows of grip here. This version has two two rows of grip. They're the same exact lens, same exact optics, you know, nothing different. The lens weighs about 750 grams, which is not too heavy for this type of lens. The size of this lens, I would compare it to maybe a 16 flat ounce can of beer. What's your favorite beer, guys? I like uh, German beer. Actually, I'm, I'm developing a taste recently for J Japanese beer. You know, with the sushi, I like to have an Asahi or, you know, drink responsibly, guys. <laughs> and it's not too heavy, which I love about it, you know, you can mount this thing on to your DSLR and you don't need to mount it. If you're doing tripod work, you don't need a tripod collar. It'll, uh, we won't break the mount at all. So it's a perfect size. It's not, like I said, not too big, not too heavy. It has a retractable uh, lens hood built in. It takes 72 millimeter filters in the front here. So the dials of this lens, it has an auto and manual switch right here. If you're planning on getting this lens and you're gonna be doing manual focus, not autofocus, I suggest you guys get the previous version of the AF model, which is the AIS model, the one that came before that. It has a much smoother focus ring. You'll like it much better than this as far as the auto, um, focus ring is concerned. 
However, it will autofocus with uh, DSLRs with autofocus motors. Make sure your DSLR has autofocus motors. You have no problem autofocusing. Uh, mirrorless cameras, you can control the aperture dial with uh, Z6 or Z7 with an FTZ adapter. However, like any other AFD lens, you cannot do autofocus. So if you're doing a Z6 with this lens, plan on using it on manual mode. That being said, guys, a little later in this video, I will do some video clips out and about, hand holding this thing, seeing how the Z6 performs with the 180 millimeter on stabilization. If you're looking for a close focus performer, the 180 close focus is at about five feet. So I don't know if that's you know good for you or bad. However, with this type of focal length, close focus, five feet, not an issue, that's plenty. Real quickly, guys, how I purchased this lens and why I did, there was a listing on OfferUp and someone was selling it maybe 15 miles away from me and uh, for about $300 US. And, you know, I ended up buying it from the guy at, for $250. You know, I drove over there, gave him the cash, tested it out and voila, I'm a proud owner of a 180 millimeter lens. How I got interested in this lens? Well, a couple of you send me comments and ask me to try out the 180. So thank you very much. I uh, took your comment into consideration and I searched and I went after it and I got it. I went for the hunt. I said, you know what? It's not too expensive. And if I don't really like it, I can go ahead and sell it, but I like it and I won't be selling it. So <laughs> I like it so far. So by the way, guys, how'd you like that Mount Baldy intro? <laughs> Beautiful background, huh guys? We're going to go back to Mount Baldy in a second. We're going to take some pictures and that location. I also did a photo shoot where I busted this lens out for a couple of portraits. I'll be showing you that as well. I'll also do some video with this lens, just in case we have some videographers out there interested in a telephoto fixed 180 millimeter. All right, guys, before we start the fun part of this video, let's go over in detail the specs of the Nikon 180 millimeter f 2.8 AF lens. Are you guys familiar with the Nikon 200 millimeter f2? Nikon's fat boy, as they call it. Well, the 180 millimeter has some similar characteristics as far as background blur bokeh goes. I'm telling you, we're talking about a lens that's $5,000. I had the 200 f2. It was an amazing piece of glass. But again, we're talking about $5,000 versus a few hundred dollars in the used market. Of course, I'm not saying that this lens is just as good as the 200 f2. I mean, let's be real here. There's a reason why you're paying $5,000. But just to have some character traits of that amazing masterpiece of a lens is simply outstanding. I will show you some sample images I've taken with this lens a little later in the video. And you tell me, does it have some similar traits of that lens? Or is that just wishful thinking on my part? <laughs> with a little bit of magic and a little bit of post-production, you can make portraits look just as good as portraits that come out of that 200 millimeter F2. And I'm not just saying that, I've owned that lens and I know what it can produce. Incredible how they still sell this lens. The AFD version still sells today for $1,000. You probably end up spending about $550 for it used, maybe a little less. So what does that tell you when Nikon still produces and offers this lens new? today in 2021 it tells you that this is a beast of a portrait lens i know photographers that use this lens for sports and astrophotography portraits so it's a pretty versatile lens if you want 180 millimeter focal length all right guys why don't we start the real fun now i'm gonna take you back to mount baldy let's go mount baldy is a community in the San Gabriel Mountains in San Bernardino County, near the eastern border of LA County in Southern California. You want some fun facts? The LA flood in 1938 destroyed most of the human-made structures in Camp Baldy. The casino was destroyed, but the hotel today 
Buckhorn Lodge survived. Here's another piece of history. During Prohibition, the area became known as a place where one could get a drink from the watchful eyes of the police. <laughs> I mean, you gotta see this for yourself. I mean, <laughs> I act like I'm, I'm acting like a kid who's never seen snow before. But in reality, guys, I hardly come up here, like I said. Well, tell you what, guys, it's time to put this lens head to head with another Nikon lens, a more modern lens. I was looking in my closet and I was trying to think what I can, you know, put this lens up against, closest thing to it. And I found the 7200 version 2 VR2 f2.8 lens right here. So, right now, I'm going to put these two monsters head to head. Of course, guys, I know this is a modern lens. You know, this has, you know, nano crystal coating, AFS, you name it. I mean, probably better glass all around. By the way, if you haven't checked out my official review of the 7200 f2.8, I go through this lens thoroughly, all the specs, test shots, you name it. Click the link above, check out my official review of the 7200 VR2 lens. This thing, I love this thing so much. And uh, this is one of these lenses where, you know, it's, it's everyday use. This thing's in my camera bag at all times. This is a go-to for portraits if I want zoom, 7200 focal length. But I wanted to check it out. I want to see the differences. Shot at f2.8, I'll stop it down a little bit as well. The 180 millimeters has a following, has a reputation of having creamy, buttery bokeh. Again, testing the bokeh on both lenses, the sharpness, colors, and all around quality of the image. So this is my go-to, but you know, at 180 millimeters, we'll shoot them both at 180. We'll see what we get. Hey, by the way, guys, how do you like this location? Beautiful, huh? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna show you guys a little more of Mount Baldy and uh, see the beauty that I'm seeing behind the camera and behind me. Quick tip, guys, it's a little chilly outside right now. I'm used to a little bit warmer weather. <laughs> I live in the West Coast. However, you know, it's about 29, 30 degrees outside and uh, it's a little cold. So word to the wise, bring a coat, you know, wear a couple layers of jackets if you're shooting in the snow and get some snow boots. Forgot my gloves, so my hands are like icicles right now, but <sighs> gotta keep warm. Rock and roll. You know what guys, I think above me, they're doing a little bit of skiing. Uh, right there above me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk up with my lenses and see if I can get some shots of them, you know, in action. If you ever come on the snow, you need proper shoes. Don't make that mistake. Rock and roll, guys. Think tank, backpack. Really cool adventures like this one. So I started hiking up the mountain. I saw a few skiers and snowboarders up there. Thought I might get lucky, shoot some sporty kind of stuff, action photos. But I got there late and it wasn't meant to be. There was hardly anybody left. So I did the next best thing. Shot what I saw, what I thought would be interesting for this review. Before I get started going through the images, I want to let you guys know these are straight from the camera. The whole point of a review like this is for you to see unedited photographs. But here's an example of a graded edited photograph in Lightroom. So on this next image, I switched lenses to the 7200, shot it at 2.8. If you guys need reference on what f-stop I'm at, just look at the top right corner if you need to pause the video to inspect the image further. The 2.8 image split screen so you could see the difference. This next one is the same image, but I zoomed in quite a bit so you guys could see the detail on both lenses at 2.8. Now right here, I zoomed in quite a lot. The 180 millimeter showed some fringing wide open, but the 7200 did not. But if you stop it down like I did F4 on the 180, the fringing virtually goes away. On this next image, Look at the bokeh on the 180mm, so smooth, 
Here's the 7200. Which one do you like better? Back on the fringing comment, you can't really see it at 100% guys. You gotta zoom in quite a bit. As you can see from these samples, the 180 millimeter, it's worth its weight in gold. In gold, guys. This next image, I'm gonna zoom in quite a bit. Look at the rails, look at the difference. Look at the sharpness at F4, that 180 millimeter is just shining. I did notice a lone skier coming down <laughs> the mountain there. And I did see one on top of the mountain here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you could see the detail at f5.6 and a little closer at the skier fresh powder <laughs> yeah i'm telling you guys the stink tank is a great backpack perfect for this kind of stuff one song comes to mind in this kind of atmosphere song by rush the trees there was unrest in the forest there is trouble with the trees for the maples want more sunlight and the oaks ignore their pleas oh man having too much fun up here i better get to it before it gets too dark to shoot take some shots of this guy right here. hey the snowman a couple of more images if you could see the bokeh on both lenses i noticed the 180 is a little smoother than the 7200 7200, although nice, it's a little more busy as far as the bokeh goes. Here's a comparison of both at F4 and a perfect example of the bokeh. On this next image coming up, a kid playing in the snow, I really like the result here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit to his face so you can see the detail wide open at 180 millimeters. This one is one of my favorites as well. I'm gonna go in close as you can see it's just a pleasing photograph and yes I did do some continuous focus the kid with the sled here <laughs> took a tumble so in this next set of images just to see the background blur wide open f4 and so on and so forth and I did do a comparison with the 7200 as well check it out this next image is cropped heavily, so you can see the image at 6.3 and the 7200 at 28. Here's a comparison between both lenses at 2.8. And the next one is comparison of the 6.3 image, both lenses cropped heavily. All right, everyone, I thought I'd do a video clip right now with the Nikon 180 millimeter lens in a controlled environment versus out and about somewhere where the conditions might be crazy. So right now we're recording this clip with the Nikon Z6 FTZ adapter. The lens is set at f2.8 wide open. I purposely set the light in the back there so you guys can see the background blur and the light so you guys get an idea of the quality of this lens. So right now we're at 2.8. I'm gonna stop it down. And by the way, I will also throw on the 7200. We'll see a difference there with video clips, controlled environment. So right now, f2.8, 180 millimeter lens. f3.5. Now, quick note guys, I will adjust the ISO as we go, as we stop it down so we can get as close to matching as possible with the light. I wanna keep the shutter speed the same at 60th of a second. So f3.5 with the 180 millimeter lens. f4.5, and right now I'm at ISO 320. f4.5 ISO 320 with the 180 millimeter lens. How's it looking? Is it sharp? I'm sure it'll get sharper as we go along. So f4.5 ISO 320. And now I'm at 5.6, 5 5.6 ISO, I believe 400, F5.6 ISO 400. All right, guys, F8 ISO, well, you know what? I won't tell you the ISO. Leave a comment down below. I want you to guess what the ISO is. Um, I'll remember it because it's a, it's a number that I won't forget, but... Uh, Right now we're F8 with the 180 millimeter. Is the background becoming more and more clear as we go along? What do you guys think? 
I'll do one final one. We'll stop it down all the way. And finally, F22. All the way down to the minimum setting of the lens. Closed all the way. F22. The ISO on the Z6, I've set it at 10,000. 10,000 ISO. F22 with the 180 millimeter lens. F2.8 on the 7200. F2.8 on the 7200. Uh, ISO 160th, 7200. F2.8. 2.8 on the 70 to 200. Right now, we are testing the lens at 2.8, 7200. Okay, I want to take you guys back to that beautiful scenery we had in the mountains. I want to show you some video clips I did hand holding this beast and I had stabilization on on the Z6. Did an okay job, did a good job. You know, it's kind of tough to hand hold this lens at 180 millimeters. Expect some camera shake. However, I did do some slow motion. So I set the camera to slow motion in camera. And I did do some pretty cool looking slow motion shots. So check this segment out and I'll give you my conclusion on this lens in a minute. Pretty cool, slow motion, huh guys? Pretty cool, I was really cold and the sun went down. So I really couldn't stick around for a lot longer. You know, I forgot my gloves and um, I was, you know, my hands were like stiff, you know, so couldn't do that for a while. And then the highway patrol came by and said, you guys gotta, you know, evacuate the area. It's getting dark, go down the mountain. So I had to go. Now, before I give you my final thoughts on the Nikon 180 millimeter F2.8 AF lens, I did a photo shoot for the 35 millimeter head-to-head -head video I just uploaded a, a week or so ago. I did get a chance to shoot with this lens. And if you remember, if you watched that video, if not, click the link above and check that video out. But we'll be bringing back Esther and she did a great job being the subject for that video. Took a few portraits of her with this lens. I wanna show you guys right now. All right, guys, we have the Nikon 180 millimeter. Esther, she's gonna help us out today and we're gonna take a few shots with this amazing lens. This is an amazing lens. You know how old this lens is? Probably your age times three. <laughs> no, it was, it was out in the 80s, I think. The Nikon Nikkor 180 millimeter 2.8 AF lens. We're gonna rock it right now. Let's do this.
This lens is not the sharpest lens wide open at 2.8, obviously. However, I love just the way the picture is rendered. The background blur, the micro contrast, the image looks solid. And when I say the image looks solid, you know what I'm talking about. The colors, the background blur, the combination of it all, the sharpness, it all comes together in a final image that just looks solid. It looks amazing. You can't go wrong with this lens. So my conclusion is if you're looking for the sharpest lens and if sharpness is the only thing for you wide open, then this probably is not the lens for you. However, if you're looking for a beautiful image with creamy, buttery bokeh, background blur, pretty solid performer, built very well, then this might just be the lens for you. The, and if you're on a budget, especially if you're on a budget and you don't want to spend thousands of dollars for a portrait lens that renders beautiful images, then this could be your option right here. And again, when I talk about sharpness, okay, wide open, like I said, it's not the sharpest lens. It's not known for sharpness at 2.8. However, you stop it down a little bit, you see that the sharpness just opens up, you know, especially 5.6 and down. The sharpness just, it's its really sharp. It's razor sharp. Stop it down just a little bit. You'll still get the creamy background blur. If you're doing portraits especially, I would stop it down a little bit. You'll get a little more sharpness, a little less depth of field, but you'll still achieve that beautiful buttery bokeh that this lens offers. And also, if you're looking for a quiet focusing lens, this is not the lens for you. Like all AFD lenses, this lens is loud, it's a screw on motor, so you know this is not the lens, this is not an AFS lens, this is not an autofocus silent lens. So to give you an example, I mean again, it's not bad, but to give you an example, let me grab my DSLR and let me mount this bad boy to a DSLR so you guys see what the focus sounds like. Oh and by the way guys, I was doing some video work earlier and I had this thing on manual mode. And so this is manual. So you have to, to set it to autofocus, you have to set the dial here to A, and then when you turn it, it locks into place. You gotta turn it in the middle. Yeah. A non-issue for me guys, I'm probably going to be doing a lot of portrait work with this lens and I don't really need speed and if I do video work with it, I'm going to be manually focusing so the AF sound, the slow autofocus doesn't bother me. And this is what the camera and lens look like attached together. Oh, let me retract the hood. There you go. So all in all guys, I'm very happy with the 180. I'm glad I purchased this lens. I'll be doing a lot more work with this lens, whether it be portraits. I'm very excited to do more video clips with this lens. Yes, this time I'll have the tripod ready to go. <laughs> All right, everyone, it's time to head out. I had a great time. Hopefully you enjoyed this review of the Nikon 180mm f2.8 AF lens from the 80s. If you like photography related videos like this, camera reviews, lens reviews, please like and subscribe to my channel, Vahography. Hit the bell icon to be notified when I upload new videos, guys. Again, I want to thank you for watching. This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. And we'll see you on the next video. And remember, if you come to the mountains and it's a snow day, bring gloves, guys. Bring gloves. Anything for rock and roll, guys, right? Rock and roll. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. All right, good job. Well, apparently I forgot my face mask and uh, they don't have an extra one, so. Yeah, I'm just doing some thumbnail poses, guys, sorry. This is for the thumbnails. <laughs> Somebody's watching me over there saying, what the hell is this guy doing with the lens? He's dancing with the lens, huh? It's kind of cold. Right now we're in Mount Baldy, California, by the ski resorts. We're testing this right now. Woo. Checking, one, two, checking, checking. I think I had enough of snow for one day. Put the heater on now. Let's go.